Good afternoon and welcome. This webinar is a collaboration between the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, VA Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, CFBMP, and the VA Office of Rural Engagement. My name is True Lester Pauling. I am the Senior Outreach Program Manager in CFBMP. I will be your moderator this afternoon. Everyone's phone has been muted. If you have a question during the presentation today, please type it in the Q&A box on the right of your screen. I will read the questions at the end of the presentation and the presenter will provide a response. The presentation will be sent to everyone that registered and joined this webinar today. This is a live recording. I would like to thank our presenter for today, Ms. Laura Zimmerman. We are so grateful for your time today. But before we get started, I would like to introduce Mr. Conrad Washington. Mr. Washington serves as the director for the VA Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships. Mr. Washington retired from the United States Marine Corps with 20 years of active duty service with a combat tour in 2004 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom II. Mr. Washington is a licensed minister actively serving in his faith. He received his master's degree of divinity in pastoral studies from Moody Theological Seminary. He also holds a MA in business management and a bachelor of science degree in education. Additionally, he is a graduate of VA's class of 2017 virtual expiring leaders program. At this time, I give you Ms. Washington. Hey, thank you, True. I appreciate it. Thank you all for joining us. We appreciate you stopping by today. And thank you, Dr. Zimmerman, for sharing your knowledge with us. We know there's going to be a great uh, session today with good information. I want to remind everyone that uh, we're out next week for some training, me and the entire team, actually all of one of the sections within the VA public affairs, but we will return the following week uh, with pre-eligibility, uh, pre-need eligibility uh, webinar. So, but today we hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Washington. At this time, I would like to introduce Ms. Laura Zimmerman. Please read her entire bio on the screen. Ms. Zimmerman is in the American Association for the Advancement of Science and is a Technology Policy Fellow and is serving in the Office of Rural Engagement, ORE. She performs a variety of tasks, including data analysis, supporting rural out outreach and strategic planning. Dr. Zimmerman began working with the VA in September 2021 with initial placement at Health Services Research and Development. Her work there focused on rural health, vaccine hesitancy, and patient education. Prior to joining VA, Dr. Zimmerman was Associate Professor of Immunology at Millican University. Dr. Zimmerman received a MS and PhD in biology from Illinois State University. In addition, Dr. Zimmerman received, excuse me, previously served on the Bacon County, Illinois Board of Health and was an elected member of the Bacon County Board. Having grown up in a rural farming community in central Illinois, she is passionate about applying her experiences in local government and health policy to rural veteran issues. At this time, I give you our presenter for today, Dr. Laura Zimmerman. Ms. Zimmerman? Sorry, I was so excited. I forgot to unmute myself. Um, so thank you uh, to the Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships for having me today. I'm excited to tell you about our new office, the Office of Rural Engagement. Before I begin, I wanna take a moment to have you think about what does rural mean to you? Rural is often defined by what it's not. It's not an urban area, but rural isn't just one thing. It can mean many different things to different people. This is what rural means to me. This is a picture of one of my favorite places at my favorite time of year, 
harvest on our family farm in central Illinois. I've spent many happy hours here, and I will always treasure the time I spent riding in the combine with my grandpa, who was a World War II veteran. I grew up in a little town two miles from our farm, a bustling metropolis of 300 people. These little towns, surrounded by corn and soybeans, in the flatlands of central Illinois, this is what rural means to me. But for you, rural will probably mean something different. There are rural areas all across the United States. And even though only 19% of the US population is found in rural areas, geographically, rural areas make up 97% of the US land area. So what rural looks like in the frontiers of the West is going to look different than rural in the South, for example. We also find veterans all across rural America. Rural veterans make up nearly a quarter of all veterans. They enroll in VA care at a higher rate than their urban counterparts and are typically older and have more chronic conditions. At VA, we're committed to the idea that all veterans should be able to access the world-class healthcare and benefits that they have earned, no matter where they live. And so we want to take into account the unique concerns and values of rural veterans. So let's take a look at how the Office of Rural Engagement is going to be a part of that. We start with, at the VA, we know that the veteran is at the center of all that we do. But we also recognize that the veteran's health and well-being is influenced by where they live, work, and socialize, which is known as the social determinants of health. Rural communities have many strengths in these areas, and in turn, they positively influence the health of rural veterans. This often includes closer proximity to family and friends, open spaces for recreation, and a lower cost of living. Importantly, while there's an underappreciated diversity in rural communities, they often have a cultural identity that encourages a pride in place. They value self-reliance, but still trust in neighbors and care for family. These principles can be a strength in the face of difficult times. Veterans themselves bring to rural communities their leadership, knowledge, and skills. But there are still challenges that rural communities and rural veterans face. For example, rural communities have a lower median income and have higher rates of food insecurity than urban communities. In addition, rural residents can have difficulty accessing health care due to provider shortages and geographic barriers. Socioeconomic and certain health outcomes in rural areas are also worse for Black, Hispanic and native populations compared to non-Hispanic whites. Oops, wrong so if we take a little closer look at some of those things that make up the social determinants of health that influence health and well-being, we can see that VA has programs to help veterans with many of these things. Like housing access to health care, education benefits, and memorial benefits. But other things the VA can't do because they are outside of our, our mandate or budget. For example, access to parks would help make it easier for a veteran to exercise, thus improving their health and well-being. But that's not something VA can build for a community. Clean water and a working sewer system are key to health, but VA is not able to overhaul a community's water system. Broadband is important for access to education, jobs, and healthcare. But again, VA isn't able to pay for a community to install it. But with the help of different federal agencies, communities can build new parks, upgrade its water and sewer, and install high speed internet, for example. And so, to really improve the health and well being of veterans, VA needs the help of the whole community and the whole federal government. But the reality is that rural communities often struggle to access these federal resources. Many small communities lack the staff, time, and technical knowledge to apply for grants and other programs. It can also be difficult to get the word out to rural veterans who may be older or lack access to broadband. The Biden of administration and the VA recognize those challenges, and have been working together to solve them by collaborating on the Rural Partners Network. VA established the Office of Rural Engagement to represent the department on the Rural Partners Network and to integrate rural issues across the entire VA enterprise. The Rural Partners Network, or RPN, is an alliance of federal agencies that are working together to help rural communities access federal resources and programs. 
This launched in March of 2022. Each participating federal agency has identified a rural desk officer to collaborate with the RPN and harness agency resources to meet the needs of rural communities. Clay Ward serves as the rural desk officer for VA and leads the Office of Rural Engagement. Our office is located within the Office of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs, which you can see here on the organizational chart. Within the Office of Public and Intergovernmental Affairs, we are situated under the Intergovernmental Affairs portion. And so we sit alongside the Center for Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships, Office of Tribal Government Relations, and the Office of State and Local Government Affairs. The purpose of the Office of Rural Engagement is to leverage the strength and resources of the federal government, VA, and veterans to build resilient rural communities to improve the health and well being of veterans. And I love that word resilient. It means that a person or the whole community itself can bounce back after adversity, can adapt to change, can leverage their strengths with the help of resources from VA or from other agencies of the federal government to help reach their goals. Our mission is to serve rural veterans by connecting VA programs and policies to the unique needs and by using a whole of government approach to support and engage rural veterans in the communities in which they live. So the idea here is we're going to meet rural veterans and communities where they are. And I'll explain more about how we're going about that in a little bit. Our vision is to transform how the VA partners with and delivers access to healthcare and benefits to rural communities across the U.S. By working with RPN, the Office of Rural Engagement will bring the federal government to veterans across rural America. We have four goals for our office. The first is to serve as the front door for rural veterans, families, and communities. We are working to build relationships with rural veterans and rural communities so that we can learn about their concerns and needs and also be a trusted source for information and resources, not just from VA, but from other federal agencies as well. We will also assess VA policy implications for rural veterans so that we can ensure that VA is taking into consideration the unique needs of rural veterans. We will also conduct outreach to engage rural veterans and their advocates because we recognize how we reach rural veterans is going to be different than veterans in larger urban communities. We are also going to pilot technical assistance for rural communities so that we can help them put in place the resources and programming that rural veterans need. So how are we going to accomplish those goals? Well, first, it is through coordination with the entire VA enterprise to help coordinate rural initiatives. So if we look back at the organization chart, you're probably aware the VA is a huge place with so many initiatives going on at any given time. And it can be hard to uh, avoid silos. So looking at the organizational chart, what we want to do within the Office of Rural Engagement is, let's say there's some uh, initiative going on on the benefit side that impacts rural veterans. We want to make sure that we're aware of it and are connecting it to anything going on the health side, for example. Also, if we need to help distribute the information or other types of outreach, then we can do that as well. Which leads to our other groups that we coordinate with rural communities and other federal agencies through the rural partners network. Effective coordination with rural communities requires that we understand the community's priorities, have clear, transparent communication and share data and information with the community. A lot of that is accomplished through our coordination and our work with the rural partners network. Here's a list of the federal agencies and commissions that are part of the RPN. The RPN is led by the USDA, and again, each agency has designated a rural desk officer to represent their agency and has similar goals for their agency that the Office of Rural Engagement has for the VA. All of the rural desk officers meet regularly virtually to share information like new funding opportunities, discuss issues, excuse me, and learn more about the rural communities that we are serving.
The RPM has two parts to its strategy to better serve rural communities, a depth and a breadth strategy. The breadth strategy involves helping all rural communities better access information on funding opportunities, programs, and resources from the federal government. A big part of this is developing the website rural.gov. This website is the front door for the RPN, and I encourage you to explore it. On the website, you'll find things like the latest news, including grants that have been distributed to rural communities. You'll see highlights and stories from rural communities across the country and updates from the Rural Partner Network. Under helpful resources, which you can see here, um, there are three main areas on rural.gov. Find help for rural communities, learn about community networks, and read the Rural Connection blog. Find help for rural communities is a fantastic resource. It contains a list of funding opportunities that are specifically targeted to rural communities or individuals. These come from across the federal government and can involve such topics as housing, transportation, water, broadband, and more. We're also making, uh, working to make this area searchable by topic, so be sure to check back often for this. Uh, the Rural Connection blog features blogs from rural communities as well as from federal agencies. These blogs are short articles that highlight things like a new federal program, or it might highlight a success story from a rural community. It's a great place to get inspiration and learn more about how to take a project from the idea stage all the way to the finish line. The community networks are part of the RPN depth strategy, and I'll talk more about them next. RPN community networks are collaborations within a specific rural area where the local people, leadership, and organizations work together to advance community priorities. Networks have been established in 10 states plus Puerto Rico, which you can see here on the map. And in some states, they include tribal areas. So there's a total of 36 community networks so far. They range in size from about 1,300 people in one tribal community to 4,500,000 uh, people across several counties. Each community network has a USDA staff member assigned as a community liaison, and that uh, community liaison works directly with the federal agencies and is a uh, connection to, to all of them and the network itself. Now, each community network determines its own priority and decides on one signature project. A federal agency is designated the lead on the signature project and coordinates with community and other federal agencies to get that project accomplished. Now, within these networks, there are nearly 200,000 total veterans with an average of 6,500 veterans in each network. So you can see why it's advantageous for VA to be a part of this. We're able to work with the community liaison to have a direct connection to the veteran in these community networks. And I'll talk more about how we're taking advantage of that later. If you are interested in getting in touch with these community networks, you can find the information for the community liaison on rule.gov as well as more information about each network. To give you an example of how these community networks are operating, I want to look at one specific network, the Kentucky Highlands Network in Eastern Kentucky, which consists of eight counties. Now, this area has a history of coal production. These difficult and dangerous jobs paid well and supported families for generations, but have been in steady decline for decades. They were also impacted by devastating flooding in the area in 2022. As we take a look at the Kentucky Highland network priorities, I think you'll see some concerns that are probably shared with your own rural community. So while rural areas are very diverse across the country, we see that there are several challenges that are shared. And I wanna discuss some of those challenges and then talk about what Kentucky Highlands, RPN, and the VA are doing to address these. The first is healthcare access. You can see the specific areas that Kentucky Highlands is particularly concerned with improving. This lack of healthcare access is common across rural communities that often suffer from provider shortages, especially in specialty care, and can be impacted by geographic barriers. And while telehealth increased during the pandemic, it can be difficult to access in rural areas due to broadband limitations. Speaking of broadband, we know that it's key to accessing education, jobs, and healthcare opportunities, but rural areas often lack access. According to the uh, recent study, 
only 62% of households in rural congressional districts had broadband connectivity compared to 73% of urban districts and 76% of suburban districts. Not only is access an issue, but rural areas can often lack reliability and affordability. Housing is a common issue in communities across the country. In the Kentucky Highlands, an already precarious housing situation was made worse by devastating flooding in 2022. The area reports a lack of affordable housing at all levels. So for example, an older couple already living in the community can't downsize because they can't find a smaller house that's in good shape. So then a family looking to move into the area, they can't find a house that would fit their growing family and first-time buyers struggle to find something in their price range. The community also reports that it's difficult to get new housing stock built as most construction companies left after the Great Recession in 2009. As the Kentucky Highlands looks to grow their workforce, development programs are needed. This includes business planning needs for local businesses, training programs, and STEM programs that are needed to train workers for an increasingly scientific and technology-oriented job market including an influx of jobs in the clean energy economy. One opportunity that the network sees for itself is economic diversification. They understand that a diversified economy is a more resilient economy. The Highlands is a beautiful area, surrounded by mountains and wonderful natural areas, great for hiking and other outdoor activities. You know, it makes my uh, makes me a little jealous. I'm growing up in the flatlands of central Illinois. Those mountains are are just gorgeous. So they want to build their tourism economy. They also believe they can take advantage of the move to remote work and entice people to move to the area. They also want to seize opportunities in the new clean energy economy and bring solar and electric vehicle battery manufacturing investments to the area. So with all these challenges and opportunities to build a more resilient community, what is the network doing? Well, the first step was to bring everyone together. The community and the federal agencies um, bring them all together through a rural partners network convening. The event brought 255 community partners and federal partners together for convening this past May. For this convening, we were joined by USDA Deputy Undersecretary for Rural Development, Farrar Ahmad, and Director of State Operations, Dr. Basil Gooden. One of the primary focuses of the convening was affordable housing, as the issue was addressed specifically during a breakout session led by Rural Development Kentucky State Director, Dr. Tom Carew, with participation by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, as well as Kentucky's strong nonprofits and the Kentucky Housing Corporation, which is the, the state's housing agency. Our partners from the Appalachian Regional Commission and the energy communities, uh, excuse me, in the energy communities, interagency working group also led break breakout sessions. As part of the convening, there was a what they called a matchmaking portion, where each of the federal partners had a table and community members could meet with them and discuss their issue or project and explore funding and program opportunities. The community network maintains a spreadsheet of projects that are needed for the community and matches those projects to appropriate federal agencies. And this spreadsheet grew by 36 new projects as a result of this convening. VA had a presence I attended along with a representative from the Louisville Regional Office. During the matchmaking session, we shared information on PACT Act and how to file a claim. And we also connected community members to VA program offices. We continued to work with Kentucky Highland and other community networks to share information on housing, employment, healthcare access, broadband access, and other priorities. Other events that we've uh, attended include um, the Rural Partners Network convening in West Virginia. Clay Ward, our rural desk officer, attended along with Ted Diaz, who's in charge of the West Virginia Department of Veterans Assistance. There were 150 attendees at this convening, including federal and state agencies, philanthropic organizations, and community members. As I mentioned before, VA is committed to serving rural veterans. This commitment was reflected in a visit to the Northwestern Wisconsin Community Network by Secretary, VA Secretary Dennis McDonough. He held a roundtable discussion with 
the USDA Wisconsin State Director, Julie Lassa, USDA Rural Development Staff, Eric Killen, who's the Eau Claire County Veteran Service Officer, and Robert McDivitt, the Director of Vision 23. And they discussed issues facing rural Wisconsin, as well as opportunities for USDA and VA collaboration. The Secretary also toured two medical facilities that see rural veteran patients and heard from staff about their concerns and ideas. We also have some upcoming RPN events as well. On August 23rd, I'll be attending the North Carolina Federal Partner Forum in Wilson, North Carolina. There's also a forum in Puerto Rico from August 28th and to September 1st. Then on August 28th, we have an event that I'm really excited about. We're working with the USDA, the RPN, and the Jackson VBA Regional Office to host a claims clinic and roundtable in Greenwood, Mississippi. The claims clinic will feature reps from the VBA, VHA, and the Mobile Vet Center, as well as representatives from the USDA. So I think this really shows the utility of the Rural Partners Network, because not only will veterans get help with their VA benefits and healthcare at this event, they will be able to hear directly from USDA about programs that can help them, like housing programs, and other rural development opportunities for both individuals and the communities in which they live. So by this time, I hope you're thinking, wow, this is some great information. How do I learn more and how do I spread the word? So the first thing to do is to sign up for our newsletter. You can sign up by clicking the link or scanning the QR code on this slide. We try to send out weekly updates with information from VA and our federal partners. And we'd appreciate it if you share the sign up widely as well. So we'll share information, like I said, from other federal agencies you know, maybe HUD has a new housing grant that's coming out, or um, maybe a webinar from USDA on a food security grant that's coming up, that kind of information that can be hard to kind of find it all because there's just so much out there. We try to take what's most important to those rural communities and put them into these updates each week for you. So hopefully you'll si sign up and find them useful. Now we also recognize that not every rural veteran is going to have access to email and the internet. So the Veterans Experience Office has developed what they call VA Radio Outreach. This features a series of public service announcements produced by the VA that can be downloaded. You can use them on radio, you can use them on podcasts, online, anywhere. They're always adding more and they're also looking for more topics. So please reach out to them um, if you have ideas. And together we can reach and engage all of our rural veterans. So with that, I just wanna thank you all for listening. I'm gonna leave, uh, leave you with the contact info for our rural desk officer, Clay Ward. And remember to sign up for our email newsletter using the QR code. And please check out all of the useful resources on rural.gov. Thanks again to the Center for uh, Faith-Based and Neighborhood Partnerships for having me. And with that, I'll turn the mic back over to Drew. Thank you, Mr. Zimmerman, for that very informative presentation. Now we will address questions in the Q&A box to the right of your screen. I see about two questions um, that are uh, on the, on the, uh, in the chat box right now. And the first question comes from Ms. Melinda Church. What are the biggest challenges face, facing military veterans? With respect to climate changes, do you have a climate action plan for our veterans? Finally, what are some of the challenges rural health veterans are facing? Oh, great, great question. Fantastic question. Um, I'm going to answer the second part first. What are some of the challenges rural health veterans are facing? So we see um, rural veterans kind of seem to reflect a, a similar um, issues as as rural populations in general. And a lot of that time, there's kind of two parts to that. They tend to be older and have more chronic conditions. So we see things like um, diabetes as we get older, and this can be exacerbated by food insecurity or um, lack of access to health care. Um, that first part of the question, the respect to climate change, that's, that's a great question. Um, and the, the scientist in me loves that question. I would say there's a there's a lot of different things that could be exacerbated with climate change in terms of um, health, but also with 
other things like housing. So we're seeing, um, you know, with the wildfires in Maui, we've seen this in, in Canada. Um, all, you know, California's had wildfires, but also flooding. We get an increase in extreme events. And so that's going to impact people. You know, we saw, as I talked about the Kentucky Highlands, um, there's lack of housing now when that was already an issue. Um, air quality from the wildfires can impact people even when it's not, you know, we were, we were getting that smoke here in Illinois, exacerbating chronic conditions like asthma and sinusitis and things like that. Um, so all of those social determinants of health, I believe, can be impacted um, by um, climate change. In terms of a climate action plan for our veterans, I am not aware of anything, but that does not mean I'm going to take that one back and probably get a hold of you because I don't want to say I don't want to. I'm relatively new, so I don't know if I've missed something or anything like that. Um, I do know we have a lot of emergency management things. You know, when there are the fires, they've been responding to the. Maui fires, um, things like that when natural disasters happen. But in terms of a climate action plan, I am not aware of anything. Thank you, yeah. Laura. The second question is coming from Kenya Vaughn. Are there any Texas vet specific resources? Thank you. May also, thank you. And mainly on house, uh, housing and business assistance with the home base business. So okay. uh, he's talking about home based businesses. Are there any Texas veteran specific resources uh, related to housing and business assistance for someone that have a home based business? Yeah, um, I think we can probably put you in connection with some groups in Texas that might have um, a better kind of on the ground idea of what might be available um you know with with va resources for these kinds of things we don't there's not a lot that's specifically for rural veterans but just veterans in general um but we can probably put you in connection with some people in texas who could who could uh probably answer that a little bit better than than i could so if we get your contact information i'll, I'll follow up with you on that okay and we'll get you make sure you have her um or his email address. Okay. Also, uh, we don't have any more questions, but I also want to thank Mr. Bill Ashton for, for providing all the rural links in the chat um, uh, under comments. We thank you for that. At this point, uh, we are going to uh, turn the back, mic back over to Mr. Washington for closing remarks. Thank you, Chu. Dr. Zimmerman, thank you, ma'am. We appreciate it. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's great to have you aboard and share. I know you knew as you get to acclimated to the VA, different things, but you have a wealth of knowledge that I know is going to be very useful to the VA. I do see an additional question here. Uh, I'll read it for you. It says, uh, how do we add to a network with additional county resources from counties that are not part of the network? Okay, yeah, that's a great question. We we definitely work with people who aren't in one of these community networks as well. Um, we um happy to set up a meeting. If you have resources um, that you want to share through our newsletter, we're happy to do that. Happy to talk to you about how we can support you, how we can work together. Um, so just yeah, just again, we'll I'll follow up with you and uh, happy to work and partner with it. Anybody working with rural veterans. Again, you don't have to be a part of one of these community networks. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, and I also want to echo what you mentioned to uh, Mr. Bill Ashton. Thank you for sharing uh, those links. And I want to remind everyone uh, as well to keep uh, in your thoughts and prayers those folks who are affected by Hawaii, uh, even the first responders as they deal with uh, the different uh, damage control. Let's just keep those uh, those folks in our prayers and thoughts as they as they try to navigate and find a way back to recovery. Uh, I also will remind all of you who are joining today, join us for two weeks. From today, we'll be back on the uh, on the mic here doing an overview of NCA pre need and burial eligibility. Again, that's August 30th, two weeks from today. So thank you all and have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Washington. Uh, also, if you need to reach out to our team, their point of contact information is on the screen here. Uh, also, you'll get this presentation um, at the end of the webinar. 
there was there is a point of contact for the presenter today. Uh, her office uh, with Mr. Clay Ward, I believe his contact information was on the screen. If you registered for this event again, we will provide you with today's presentation. Please subscribe to our website and Facebook for future webinars. Thank you for joining us today. This adjourns today's webinar. Thank you and have a good day. Bye bye.